Hey everybody, it's Missy Wolf with Center Stage Magazine and I am here with Big Vinny. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Uh, just, you know, like I, said, I was just kind of telling you a little bit ago, I was on, I'm on daddy duty and, and, and rocking mm -hmm. out with my baby girl today. So I'm, uh, I'm living the best life. I love that. Now, how old is she? She is three, but she'll be four in June. So just, uh, just right around the corner, she'll be hitting that four year old. This is like that fun personality stage that I oh, love. Yeah. I loved when they were like three, four years old. It was my favorite. Love yeah, that. no, she she's awesome too. She's a big personality, just like her daddy and her, her mom's a big mm -hmm. personality too. So she gets it yeah. on. I love that. And I love that you guys are both doing different things, but you you both are focused on fitness as well. And I saw a post that you did, I think it was two days ago, where you were just, you know, you had the devil on the shoulder bit <laughs> and you know. Yeah. And you just pushed through it and you were like, you know, God's got you. He's, you know, telling you to get this done now. Like that was so extremely great to see. And I think so many people fall into that and they want to give into, I can do it later. I can do it yeah. tomorrow. I, I can catch up. And I'm so glad you posted that because so many of us need those reminders. Yeah. And, and a lot of times I post stuff that it's whenever I have that in, internal conflict in myself, I'm like, mm -hmm. man, if I was having this issue today, then most likely somebody else is too. And so that's yeah. why I try to post those things whenever I'm sitting there. I'm like, you know what? If it's a struggle for me, it's somebody that, you know, I've lost 200 and something pounds and kept it off for 13 years. And mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be diabetic and be 500 pounds and have all that, you know, weight on your shoulders and weight on your, and your belly too. And uh, yeah. so if it's hard for me, then it's probably hard for other people too. So I just try to take the message that God lays on my heart and put it out there. So. I, I love that. So thank you for doing that. And and back to your whole weight loss journey and being on that show, but but starting in that hospital where the, the doctor said that you weren't yeah. going to make it to 30. What was that? What went through your mind at that moment? Like, how did that make you feel? You know, uh, for a second, it kind of like it was a gasp of like, oh, man. And then it was just complete determination. It's like, well, I'm not going to let that be the end of my story. And, yeah. you know, I hope that it doesn't take people to the point to where they're laying in the hospital bed in danger of losing their leg and being told they're not going to make it to 30 to make that decision to change their life. You know, I thought you know, I had the record deal with Toby Keith. I, you know, I had a good looking girl. I was, I was on top of the world, you know, and I thought nothing could touch me. And then, you know, uh, sometimes no matter how cool we think we are, diabetes don't care. Cancer don't care. Mm -hmm. These, all these things that, you know, not that, you know, cancer is a lot more unpredictable than diabetes, but I didn't have type one. I had type two, type two diabetes. And that was because I was, you know, yeah. 200 and something pounds overweight. Well, I mean, theoretically on a, on a, on a, if you consider everything now, I'm still morbidly obese because I weigh 330 pounds, but it's a, it's a little different 330 yeah, pounds yeah, than, yeah. than most people are. But, um, but you know, as far as my numbers, you know, as far as my diabetes is completely gone, my A1C still stays okay. under five. Um, I've been really blessed to get to, to beat those things. And so it's just determination for me of like, no, nah, man, you ain't going to let yourself. There's there's people, I was in danger of losing my leg. There's people come back from war that got their leg blew off, you know, fighting for this country, you know. And here I was right. sitting around eating, you know, eating too much sugar and about to lose mine. And I just thought that was unfair to, to you know, everybody that has an able body, you know, that God's given you the ability to do it. If you take advantage of that and you don't, you don't go out there and do what you, what you need to do, um, you know, there's no excuse for it. So hopefully I yeah. have inspired other people. Uh, I know that I try to live my life in a way that will help other people make a better choice as well. Right. Well, and you just, you, you teamed up with Jelly Roll recently to the corrections facility yep. for the boys. Like, how was that experience? I think Billy Dawson was there too. I saw pictures. <laughs> yeah, and, I swear and, I thought. And I there. love Billy. Billy's, Billy's yeah. a longtime friend, Mr. D. I love him too. Um, it was, it was such an amazing thing. You know, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. We've, we've helped raise money, me and my partner, Jared Blake. Um, we have a, a thing called Music with a Mission where we help charities right. raise money by putting on concerts. And um, we had done a thing for for the Beat of Life for that. And so she called me and she's like, hey, would you be willing to come do this thing? We're going to be writing songs with um, the kids and the juvenile delinquents. So I'm just sitting there thinking, OK, these are kids who got in a little bit of trouble. You know, they need to get on a better path. I didn't realize we we're mm -hmm. walking in. I mean, we're writing with people that have murdered people, you know, oh, yeah. um, and that that have a 10, 15 year sentence after they get of age. And they're still 14, 15, 16 years old right now. So I didn't know what we were walking into. I didn't know what we were doing. Uh, are you coming to get on camera? OK, <laughs> come here. You can say hi. Say hi. Hi. Here you go. 
<laughs> Show me. <laughs> All right, no oh, you're going to be an in entertainer too. I love it. Oh, yeah. She's doing her flips now. She she didn't want to go to gymnastics earlier. Um, but we'll take her tomorrow. I mean, she can go any day of the week, but. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was it was a really cool it was a really cool event because we really you know we really got to talk to these kids. Um, you know, my hopes is that we can tell them, hey, when you've served your next ten years or whatever, you know, try to have some some hope. Uh, try to get the best education you can while you're in here. Try to yeah. take advantage of whatever you know opportunities are offered in here. And um, but it was it was interesting because I think in my life I kind of live out this thing of like it doesn't matter what you've been through or what you've done, you can still make a change. You right. know, and now I think on a spiritual level, that's true. But, you know, some of these kids are going to come out never, never being an adult. They're going to be 30 years old when they get out of prison mm -hmm. and they've never had to do anything on their own. And so yes. I really think I really hope that, you know, as our prison systems continue to change and do stuff that we find a way to to prepare these boys for life outside of those, you know, cell cell gates and stuff right. like that, you know. And I mean, a lot of people think if you murdered somebody, you should never be out of prison. And, and uh, you know, I think it can be depending on what the situation was. But if you got caught up in a gang fight and you, you know, mm -hmm. shot somebody and they were shooting at you and vice versa, I think that's different than if you go in and just murder somebody that's, you know, an innocent bystander that for no reason. Right. I mean, that's that's a different mindset. But, um, you know, our, our hopes is that we can rehabilitate people, you know. Um, the hopes is that we can help people see that there's a better way of life, that there's, you know, for me, it's it's teaching them about Jesus Christ and it's teaching them about mm -hmm. how, you know, the only and ultimate thing that we're here for is to spread uh, the word of, of God, you know, and and, and the love of, yeah. that Jesus showed us and that God showed us by sending his only son to die for us. Um, you know, that's really what mm -hmm. our purpose on earth is. You know, I think so many people get caught up in money and objects and, you know, better cars mm -hmm. and bigger houses <laughs> and things. And we forget like, it says in the Bible, it says, seek ye first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. And uh, of right. course, it's talking about clothing and stuff before that. And, and you know, in that verse. But um, I think it's the same thing just in life in general. You know, you, yeah. if you do that thing, good things are going to come your way. Absolutely. And it, and if you I always, I always tell everybody, you know, what you think about is also what you bring about. And yeah, if you are stuck in this negative frame of mind, that's all you're going to see because that's all you're focused on. Yeah. And, you know, I, I have been through several issues as well, um, medically and, and, and different things. And I'm a type one diabetic because I had to have my pancreas removed. Right. Um, and so I have been through a lot of these challenges and sometimes people will say, you know, how are you still doing this? Or how? Well, because I have a family and yeah. I have priorities and I'm alive and I shouldn't be, yeah. I am alive right now. You got God, so, God, God still, God still got a plan for you. So absolutely. So, so I, I think it's very, very important that you keep being an example to these kids and to everyone else. And you're using your social media the correct way. And I know that we need to be talking about your music as well, but I just, oh, felt like I listen at, at the, we're we going to talk about this stuff. That's to me is, is, better than anything i don't care how many yeah. songs i release ain't nothing better than help, helping hopefully saving somebody's soul you know so right right and and you've been through so much and you have so much experience and so many things that you can share and you're just you're <laughs> you seem to be like the most genuine open book ever and and i know that with those struggles I mean, I know that that does a lot to you personally, but no. you still are choosing to be that beacon of hope and light for somebody else. And that is commendable. So thank you for that. I, I think that's important. Always. always. Um, yeah, I, I think authenticity is the number one trait you can have. If you're authentic with people, um, you're you're going to make some people mad sometimes because I'm always going to talk yep. about I'm always going to talk about Jesus. I'm always going to talk about, you know, the, what I believe is right and um you know, I mean, everybody will get into everything from politics to this and that. And they're asking, yeah. me, you know, are you this? Are you that? Are you right? Are you left? I was like, man, I'm I'm for whatever God wants. Yes. Yes. And, and, and God wants us to forgive each other. God wants us to help each other, uh, okay. all that stuff, you know, and, and I don't, I don't think that means helping always, if it's going to hurt you, if it's going to hurt your way, right. hurt your morals, that's a different kind of thing, yeah. you know, compromise your morals in order to help. But 
Um, but you do try to help people where you can that are in those bad situations. So uh, Absolutely. hopefully God continues to use me as a, as a tool. And if that's uh, if that's what my whole life is and I'm okay with it. You know? Yeah. I love that. And, and your new song. Oh my gosh. First of all, I hope that it helps the people that are having estranged relationships with family members, mm -hmm. friends, whoever, because your song is dead on like those memories yeah it, it, you're there's going to be a day where you don't have those opportunities with those people in your life and and i know we all know somebody or we're going through it ourselves or you know we have friends that are going through it where yeah they're just not communicating with somebody in their family anymore and it is heartbreaking and yeah. and so your song brings some tears and let me tell you you talk about missing your grandma i miss mine a whole yeah. hell of a lot you know, I, I think with the song, and I'm so glad that you picked up on that in the song because that was part of the reason I wrote it. You know, my my uh, sister didn't have the best relationship with my dad, and uh, and he tried, and you know, she was stubborn and um and for right reasons. You know, we didn't really know him until mm -hmm. we got older, but he was trying to come back yeah. in our lives, and then um he took an early exit. You know, he left here at 43 years old, and uh, oh, I was man. two, and uh, Cheyenne was still 20 because her you no, know, she was 21. Uh, Cause she's 15 months behind me and you know, she, she regrets it. I mean, she, she really wishes that she would have got a chance to get to know him better and he tried and she knows that. And um, I think that, you know, obviously those kind of things, those type of things are regret. Yeah. I think regret is always worse than failure. You know, if you try something, mm -hmm. you fail, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I really wanted people to get that out of it. Like, you know, so what they messed up when they were younger, you know, I, I used to, you know, I had a very bad relationship, not a bad relationship with my mom, but we, you know, we didn't have, you know, we didn't have the best life as kids. And right. so, you know, for a long time with my mom, I kind of held that against her and I had to forgive my mom in order to lose all that weight and to keep it off and do the things that I've done. I had to forgive her, you know, and I thank God mm -hmm. that I did because we've had a great relationship in my adult life and, and, you know, and I'm there for her, you know, I still have to kind of be there mm -hmm. for her when she's going through her yeah. Um, she has um, yeah. clinical depression. So she, you know, she goes through suicidal thoughts and things like that, which I, when mm -hmm. I was younger, I didn't understand. Cause I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, you, you got some money and you, you got a good little piece of property and you, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and she's, she would always tell me, I just can't explain it. She goes, I just feel like I don't mm -hmm. deserve to be here. You know, all this kind of yeah. stuff. And so, you know, I, I, I love the fact that, you know, you picked up on the, you know, the part of that, that it's not just, Hey, these hurt because we can't have them anymore, but it's also, you know, hoping to be a reminder that, you know, there's more important things than the argument you got into over yeah. $50 or, you know, I think one of the biggest arguments we see in, um, in families is when, you know, when the matriarch dies or when the, uh, the great grandfather dies mm -hmm. or whatever, we'll argue over what, who's going to get what. And, oh, you know, that's one thing I love yeah. about my mom. My mom is my mom, you know, as many mistakes as she made when we were kids, she is not a selfish person and she's not a, um, she doesn't, money doesn't drive her. Like, you know, whenever my grand, my great grandmother died, I remember there was, I won't say names, but there was a couple of members of the family that were like, I want this and I want that. I want this. Yeah. And like, well, what I think do you every want? family like, has that. Yeah. And they were talking <laughs> to my mom, like, what do you want? And she's like, I, I just want a few of these pictures of her and I want my blanket that she made for me. And outside of that, y'all can yeah. have whatever, you know, yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was okay. incredible to see that, but, um, but yeah, but you know, the other part of the song, the more lighthearted part of the song is like, man, remember when you were a kid and you went to Christmas at mm -hmm. your granny's house or remember when you went fishing with your dad and uh, how those memories, they do hurt us, you know, mm -hmm. they, they you know that most beautiful memories, they hurt us uh, when we can't have them anymore. So, yeah, I know. And it, it, I relate to that song too, because, well, I went fishing with my dad all the time. Like, that's what we did. I was like the son he never had. So, you know, <laughs> and. I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed. He lives actually on my property and oh, there's cool. this catfish pond, you know, down, down a ways yeah. from us. So, you know, we're going to be hitting that up this summer. So, you know, I'm, and I'm going to hold on to every single one of those moments. And, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that my kids have got to have those moments too, but it, it seems like, you know, you've just done such a good job of, of teaching and using your life to help others and and to help remind them of what's most important and i just think that is so commendable because so many people out there have the ability but for whatever reason they just don't want to seize it you know they don't want to yeah. seize that opportunity to do that 
I think, you know, for me, there was a time in my life whenever I was going for the record deal and all that. Not that I wouldn't, you know, love to have a record deal now. Right, but, right. But that was my identity. I was caught up in the fact of like, okay, I got to get this record deal. I got to have a number one. I got to write a number one. I got to be this. I got to make this much money. And I just don't have those constraints on me anymore. I don't have those mm -hmm. um, expectations of myself. I think my expectation is to wake up and be the best dad uh, that I can be. Um, sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. I always want to make as good a money as I can because it makes life easier. Sure, absolutely. Um, but, I, but I've met a lot of people that are billionaires in my life and and very few of them were happy. And, yeah. and or I, they, they get happy for a little while, but they don't have true joy. And when you have true joy, it's not based on the money. It's not based. It's yeah. unfair. Like, you know, a lot of people, you know, like, well, if my wife was happy, I would be happy. I'm like, listen, she's responsible for her own happiness. You've got to be responsible for yeah. yours. And if yeah. you put all the pressure on her to try and make you happy, then, you know, she's going to be too focused on you to make herself. And really the only way uh, to find true joy in this world is, is to find, you know, Jesus Christ is to find your Lord and Savior. And when you do that, um, things get better. You know, all the things, yeah. all the things get better whenever you realize that you got, you have to put God first. And if you try to put that woman first or that man first or that car first or that house first or whatever it is, uh, that becomes your God and you're always, mm -hmm. people are going to let you down. Things are going to let you down. Uh, that's just the way it is. You know, the only thing that's not going to let you down is God because it's way bigger than, it's way bigger than just here on this earth, you know. It, it really is. And we have this thing in our family and I know a lot of people around the you know world have this. I call things God moments when no, things it, happen and you know, there is no other explanation. Oh yeah, is, absolutely. And, and if, everybody would just stop and think really hard about certain things in their life. They will find mm -hmm. and remember those moments that were 100% unmistakable God moments. And I oh. cherish those. And yeah. there are some in my life that are so huge. And without going into detail, I just remember this one day I, I was faced with making a very tough decision. And I just threw my hands up and I said, God, I can't make this decision because th I can't make this one, this one, yeah. or this one. Like none, none of these options work for me. I can't do it. I, I need you to do it for me. And lo and behold, that decision was made for me. I didn't have to do any if, of it. If you see Kim and the things you do, pray about it. You know, so many people think, oh, I'm praying. I'm just sitting there. When you truly pray and you get down and you humble yourself, because, yeah. you know, the word, the word humble has always been odd to me because people say, oh, you got to humble yourself to everybody else. I don't believe I believe you're kind to everybody, but I believe mm -hmm. when you you only humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, because to humble yourself yeah. is to think lower of yourself than than somebody else. And so I've never loved that word humble, even and I know yeah. there's a great we're all song humble and kind. Uh, but I, I believe that. Right. more kind and they you know the humble thing they need to say for god and when they do that yeah. and you go to god and you ask him he's going to give you the answer now i don't know what it ain't always going to be the answer you want you know no. you're, gonna, mm -hmm. yeah, you're gonna hope that it's the other way and, <laughs> you know but what happens is it never fails you get two or three years down the road or five years down the road and you're like man thank god i made this decision mm -hmm. you know yes. and i know for me after my first divorce uh hopefully my only divorce ever but i was just like <laughs> i ain't never getting married again i'm gonna go oh, i was the, the same way I'm going to be a dog and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then God inserted Jenny into my life, my wife. And, you know, she just, I, I just knew this. You know, when I first went out with her, I was like, you know, I was sitting there thinking, I ain't never going to get married again, but you know, maybe she'll, you know, be a fun person to hang out with for a yeah. while. I knew the first day that I met her that I'd marry her. And I was like, dang it, God, <laughs> you, you know, I, you know, I knew it. <laughs> do something in my life. Now I'm going to be getting married uh -huh. again. Um, but we ended up, you know, we went on one day, our first date was at Whole Foods because she was, uh, training for a bodybuilding competition oh, and, wow. she, you know, she really, I couldn't really take her to a restaurant. So I took her to Whole Foods and I even messed up there. I got her, um, chicken, asparagus, and then I bought some watermelon. And of course me, I, you know, I'm not never done bodybuilding, ne didn't know about yeah. bodybuilding at that time. I was more of a power lifter. Um, but <laughs> I'm getting that watermelon. She's like, Hey, thank you so much. I love watermelon, but I can't have this. I got a week before the show and. All yeah. this, I mean, you have watermelon. I was like, it's mostly just water. And she said, yeah. She's like, it's too much sugar and make you know, make me hold, you know, yep. and, stuff, and stuff like that. And I'm on a, uh, you know, she was drinking a certain amount of water every day and then all this. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of dedication uh, to do those things, you know. For me, you yeah. know, when you're doing powerlifting and strongman, you just eat a lot and lift heavy things. Right. You know? <laughs> For right. them, they got to be meticulous on how much water they take in, how many calories, how much fats, oh, yeah. carbs, and proteins, and all that. So it's yeah. interesting. It's interesting. So. 
Um, they are so but, disciplined. So kudos yeah. to her. I do not have that nope. kind of discipline in my oh, life. I thought I, I, thought I no. did. I tried it. <laughs> I did it for about two months and, and I and I did lean down. But uh -huh. I mean, carrying your food with you everywhere you go. And and I mean, I don't mind having food prepped up in the refrigerator because I always do. Yeah. Uh, but having it, you know, sparsed out into every little container, <laughs> taking it with you everywhere you go, sitting there eating at the red light, trying to get it in because you're on a time. I mean, you're on a timer yeah. like it, it's two and a half hours. Bam, you're eating again. And yeah. uh, so it's a, it's an interesting life. But anyway, well, but yeah, no, this, um, you know, this is uh, I love the interview. I'm glad that it's not just a typical uh so let's focus on the song. And how, you know, <laughs> when is it coming out and all that? I'm glad you're actually asking real questions. Well, you when when I was looking you up and just you know research, I just felt like I don't know, just connected in so many different ways. And I was like, you you are just such a genuine person, and I really want everybody to see that i want them to walk away from this interview and go if they don't know you already and just start following you because you're so positive and you're honest and it's just we need more people like you we need more of that in our lives i know i do um and and, and it's great to surround yourself with people that. who will lift you up and you are that person and so um, I, I'm sorry that i didn't do more of the music if, you know and i know you had great inspiration with your oh. dad I mean, yeah. that that's great, but you know, we do need to talk about what you have coming up and your new single, yeah. the best ones, and and all of that. So tell everybody yeah. everything you got coming up. So you know, it's been awesome getting. You know, I was with Trailer Choir. Obviously, still we still have Trailer mm -hmm. Choir. I still play a lot of shows, yeah. not a lot of shows, but several shows a year with Trailer Choir. But um, in 2020, I decided I'm gonna put out my own music, and I had this song called Good Life, and I was like, dude, I'm gonna put out this song called Good Life. And I put it out like it was coming out like March 14th or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, like March 20th, they shut down the entire world. Yeah, and I, I know. had this song out called Good Life where it's all about, oh, man, let's just go out and enjoy ourselves and and be thankful. And, was, and everybody was, I'm pretty sure at the time, nobody wanted to listen to that song. Uh, a couple months later, they did. But that was my first ever release as a solo artist. And, you know, fast forward a few years now and, uh, and, and getting to release a few more songs, I really started releasing more songs last year i think it released three last year um and then uh now this will be the fourth one and i'm really excited about it because it's uh it's one of those songs that the day i wrote it i'm like i'm cutting this song mm -hmm. and it's my life i mean when you listen to it it's literally i mean i grew up in perry county tennessee we we wore black and gold you know i graduated yep. in 02 and and uh it's you know it's at christmas at my granny bell's house and fishing with my dad those are all things that are truly from my life and the thing I love about this song is people could literally, I might do like one of those open verse challenges because people could literally write their own verse to this song yeah. over and over and over again. So it's called the best ones hurt the most. And the reason I love it so much is because I could have written 20 more verses to it. You know, it really, I mean, I really got in my feelings and in my memory. What is it, baby? See, dad, dad. I see dad ass. Can you say hi? Dad, dad. Say What's say her hi. name? Her name is Harley. Harley Marie. Harley. Harley. You, you got are something on your nose. So <laughs> Can you say hi? Oh, oh you made crazy eyes. That is all lady. I think I think all the fans okay. will love. Go over and go over and sit down. I'll oh, be able to play you in a minute. I love you too, baby. <laughs> so she's actually named after Harley Allen. Everybody's like, oh, it's Harley Quinn or it's Harley Davidson. I'm like, no, it's Harley yeah. Allen, one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Uh, one of my favorites, anyways. Yeah. So anyways, but no, you know, there, I could have written, I got really into my feelings on this and, and it was hard for me to pick it out, but I wrote it with uh, Chris Sly, who is a hit songwriter. He wrote um, mm -hmm. uh, Here Comes Goodbye uh, for Rascal Flatts. Uh -huh. Here Comes Goodbye. Yeah. Here come and then Mary Cutter. And they both had the Nate Smith uh, wreckage song that was number one this past year as well. Right. And uh, hey, go let the dog out. <laughs> um but anyways, you know, they, they, uh, when, when I took this idea to them, I'm like, man, I've got this cool idea, you know, and I had the, this whole verse written about being on a John boat with my dad and all this. And I started kind of talking, telling the stories and I'm sitting there telling a story. And of course, Mary's just typing out the story. And then, yeah. uh, let me let this know. Yeah. And then and Mary's uh, a great songwriter. Mary's great. I love Mary. And, and, um, you know, I've been working with her literally since she got to town. Um, she started playing my shows years ago. When she first right. moved here, right outside, she tried to go get on my bed. Uh, we've been we've been writing songs. We've only written a couple songs together, 
but we've uh, we've been blessed to get to uh, be really good friends. And yeah. I love seeing her success because she's one of the good ones. Mm-hmm. And she deserves it. She works her butt off. So she 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 does work her butt off for sure. Yeah. We followed her for years. Yeah, um, and now she's fact, she's awesome. Yeah, and she came Sly, to my yeah. wedding. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? She came to my wedding. Wait, Mary came to your wedding or Chris Sly? Mm-hmm. Mary did. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah. when was that? I didn't even get an invite. To be honest with you. <laughs> um, no, that was 2018. It was September 22nd, 2018. Oh. Yeah, that would be uh, that'd be about the time I met her, probably maybe a year before that or so. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. No, I, I love Mary, and and so mm-hmm. when I took him this idea, you know, I kind of had my expectations for it and all that, but then uh, really when Sly hit that that kind of opening lick, that da 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 da, da whatever, whenever, whenever he hit that, I mean, it just yeah, I was sold on this on this song. Yeah. My dog is crazy. So is mine. Uh, I got a, I got a gold mini golden doodle, and they. Uh, you know, They're they have smart. a lot of energy. But yes. anyways, um, yeah, he hit that note. As soon as he hit it, I mean, it, it just gave you that feel of going back in time. Like it's like in a, in a movie, you know, when all of a sudden a memory mm-hmm. comes up in a movie. And, yes. You know, the certain music hits. And so when that hit, I was just like, you know, we, we got in our feelings. I cried a little bit. They cried a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, well, we need to tell one of y'all stories, not just mine. They're like, no, 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 this is your song, dude. You know? Yeah. And so uh, we kept it based on me. And I, I be- basically just told the stories and we just made them rhyme. That was it. I so. love it. I love it. And and it's so funny. And I think, too, part of the reason why I relate so much to that song is because I just feel like every like I was a black and gold girl where, where I grew up. You know, those were yeah. colors in high school, um, you know, and, and, and everything. With, this is actually this necklace that I'm wearing is all about my grandmother. You oh, know, wow. so it was just there was, there was so much in that song that it was just, I, and I feel like everybody, it's not just me that can relate to this. Like everybody, it's just the black and gold cracks me up. Cause that's exactly what I was. So <laughs> I can tell you the the folks that have heard this song, um, I've seen a lot of tears fall and yeah. I've even seen it do like what you talked about earlier. Um, one individual that I played for is like, dude, I gotta go call my mom was his mom, not his dad, but yes. I gotta go call my mom and, and I gotta just, you know, make you know, bury the hatchet with, my yes. issues I've had with her because what if she died tomorrow? He goes, I'd be lost forever. Exactly. And I said, yeah, exactly. or what if you died and then she'd be lost forever, you know, and she's got to go through that pain. Um, you know, you don't want people to have to do that. So no, there, it's, there needs it's to been be really closure. cool to, to see the song and the reactions that people have to it. Um, my kids love it, you know, I, and I didn't even know if they'd understand it, but then they started asking me about, um, and they're three and six, but they started asking me about uh, my, my dad. They're like, so, so you and your dad, She's trying to brush my hair. She's trying to brush your uh, hair. <laughs> she's always uh, on it. So, but yeah, they started asking me questions. Hey, hey, go sit down. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Just sweet. Thank you. She wants me to have her brush. She wouldn't. Yes. She wouldn't let me brush her hair and take her to gymnastics earlier, but now she's in. Uh, but yeah, they asked me questions about, you know, well, tell me about your dad and tell me about, mm-hmm. you know, Granny. Her, her name was Granny Bell, but her real name was Thelma, Maddie Thelma Bell. And uh, they want they want to know. I see you, baby. That's, it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little, that's Jagger's book. You can't mess with that one. You can get the other book over there and, and play in it. I see. Uh, she likes to do uh, homework already. I don't know why she's going to be way smarter oh. than me. Uh, just she's definitely got my mom, it. my my uh, wife's genes and that because I was yeah. the kid that did just enough to get through high school. Of course, I was also working a full time job while I was in high school. But um, mm. my wife was the one that you know she has she has her degree from Belmont. She's a singer songwriter as well, and she okay. moved here to be a performer. And she got performing arts bachelor degree in performing arts and with graduate with honors and blah blah blah. Wow, good stuff. <laughs> and and we're still paying for that education to this day. So. You know, as many people are for sure. Yeah, no, it's baffling. Um, you know, I I did not pursue that. I wasn't cut out for it. I was burned <laughs> out. It didn't work. But I am grateful that I don't have the debts. I will say. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, especially if you're going to have a debt like that, it needs to be a, um, you know, something that you could actually use in life. I said, yeah. I said, so what was you thinking when you were going for performing arts? She goes, um, I thought I was going to get a record deal and be a massive star and make millions of dollars. Cause you know, I was, she was, she was 17 actually when she first got to college cause she was yeah. smart. and uh, she goes, I, I thought I, I didn't need a plan B. I was like, well, you don't have to have a plan B. You just have to realize that you got to do something that 
you know, probably doesn't uh, right. utilize the thing. I said, she goes, well, I could be a music teacher, but I'd have to go pass some kind of the general education thing or something like that. So yeah. I was like, well, congratulations. And, it, and it's, and it's a shame, but you know, it's like, I'll never forget my, my whole life. I was told, Oh, you don't want to be asking, would you like fries with that? You don't want to be asking that one of these days, get your education. And then I was going to go be a music teacher and, you know, and a football coach. That was my plan, mm -hmm. music teacher, football coach. And uh, so I went to college for one year and then I started kind of questioning things. I'm like, why am I taking more math and more English and more all this? Not that my, you know, English and math is great. <laughs> I was like, but why am I taking more of this when I really just want to learn more about music so I can teach that? And then I started asking questions. I'm like, well, how much does a music teacher make? Oh, well, they start off at 23000 a year back then. That was, of course, 22 years ago. And uh, I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I'm making, at the point in time, I was an assistant manager at Sonic, and I was making probably thirty grand a year. Uh, and then I got the general manager job. We got offered the general manager job, and it was making around seventy grand a year. And I'm like, well, wait a second. I was like, we got to have a talk here because, I, I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a different kind of work, but I mean, double, triple the amount of money that you're making at the <laughs> other places is, is, is a big deal. So, so I literally yes. started evaluating that and I feel bad for teachers because, you know, for everything they have to do and we're putting these, these people in charge of our kids and saying, Hey, you need to be the one teaching them every day. And then we pay them, you know, 24, 28, you know, $30,000 a year. And it's a shame because it should be a lot more than that. So. Yeah. Well, you know, and the, and there are some that, that do make more. Um, I, you know, I worked with oh, yeah, several, I some, but you know, um, I, I think that's just, you know, that's where your passion comes into play, you know? Yeah. Um, and if you're really doing what you love, it doesn't matter, you know, to some people. Yeah. Um, I don't oh, think no, it's, anybody... it's, not, it's not, it's not on the teachers. It's on, you know, yeah. public school wise anyways. It's exactly. it's on us. It's it's on it's on where we're where we're spending our tax dollars, and yep. we don't have to get into all that because a lot of our tax dollars don't get spent oh, in gosh. America. But I, uh, I, I have my own opinions on that, and some people don't like it, and some people agree with me hundred percent. But either way, it all comes from love because I'd much yeah. rather see our teachers getting paid half a million dollars a year as right? opposed to sending any more money over to another war. So exactly. Oh my God, you and my husband would get along famously too. <laughs> <laughs> now, where, um, now, where are you? Are you out of Nashville? I'm just an hour south. So. Oh, what, where are you at? I'm like, do you know where Columbia is, Spring Hill? Yeah, I'm from okay, Perry well, I'm, County, Tennessee. Okay, I'm I'm in Kolioka, so I'm just right next yeah. to Columbia. My cousins, uh, I don't know if you know Micah Bullion, um, I, Kayla I Bullion. Anyways, they're mm -hmm. they're from they live in Kolioka. Um, okay, I yeah. In, and I live I lived in Spring Hill for a while. Lived in Columbia for a while, but I'm from Perry County, Tennessee, just okay. probably an hour from there. But no, I know exactly where you're at. So. Okay. We'll see you next time. We'll have to have you come out. We have like a music venue out here. We do performances yeah. by the pool and we live stream them. There are a lot of fun. I'm in. So. You just let me know. Let, let's put it yeah, on the board. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to have you come yeah. out. But but okay. So your your new single releases on May 17th. Yep. Right? Okay. So tell everybody where they can find you, where they can go and all so, that good stuff. Cause I know I've kept you on here way longer than your schedule probably allows I, for. And I, I set aside everything for you. So okay. um I, I am, you can find me at Big Vinny Official. That's B I G G, two G's. So I'm too big for one G. Big Vinny, V I N N Y <laughs> Official. And if you search that, you can find me on everything from, um, you know, TikTok is the same, mm -hmm. Instagram, is the same, everything's the yeah. same. So just well, look up I Big Vinny it. Official and you can find me. If you go to my Instagram, there's a link tree in there that takes you to my website, which is bigvinnyofficial.com. Um, so, you know, just feel free to go on there, tell everybody and, Y'all come see me, you know, I, I got to do some motivation yes. for you. You'll see my kids doing some crazy stuff. You'll see the workouts. Uh, you'll see a little bit of music, probably need to do more music. Uh, my wife does have me learning how to sing. I will always love you right now. So okay, uh, all she's right. like, you need to cover this song. I'm like, okay. I said, can you see me now? Oh, here. Uh, I said, yeah. okay. I said, I guess I'll, I'll do. I will always love you. I said, the problem is, is once, well, first off Dolly and then Dolly and Vince Gill. And yeah. then, Whitney Houston, who yep. obviously crushed it, and then yes. you even, and then and then since then, every amazing singer on American Idol and The Voice and everybody has done that song at some point. Oh yeah, and uh, so I'm making it a little different. We'll do a little more country, a little more, okay. a little more Big Vinny. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be cool when I get it down. I don't have it where I want it yet, but I got, it. I'm getting it there. So. Okay, but you're working on it, and you're gonna get there because we yeah. all have faith in you. Well, I appreciate that.
Um, but yeah, y'all come see me. Uh, hope you, hope, hopefully everybody loves the song. And if you don't love the song, what's okay. I'll put out another song. Maybe you'll like the next one. There if you don't you. like any of them, I'm probably not for you. And you can go listen to somebody else. Just don't, don't, uh, don't say bad things to me because I'm bigger than you are. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I couldn't say it any better. So everybody, thank you so much. Check them out. Stream the song until next time. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> say bye. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha.